Hello and welcome back to another episode of my FIFA career mode with Schalke. Today we're going to be playing two games, one against Hoffenheim and one against Leipzig. Uh, make sure you forgive me if I do say Leipzig throughout this because uh, that's just the way I've always said it wrong. But um, yeah, we're going to quickly interact with our squad because I know I haven't done this very much on videos. But uh, Bozdegan is playing well, we'll tell him that. Ibisevic, yeah, not too bad. Um, but uh yeah, I think he's wanting to retire or leave the club. And Uth, of course, is playing very well. So we'll encourage him to keep that up. But yeah, we need to get our squad set for the first match. Of course, we have a suspension to Nastasic. So we automatically get rid of him off the bench. And I think they replaced him with Becker. But you can see the effort we put in in that game against Bayern Munich really cost us for this match. Um, people like Stambouli are running out of stamina. And we don't have cover to actually replace him so i think something we're gonna have to look to do is reach into the youth academy seeing if we've got any young central defensive midfielders that we can start giving game time to and can help it cover the squad uh, in situations like this but um here we go straight to hoffenheim home, home of sap or sap of course the uh, financial software a lot of the success of hoffenheim is down to that bit of software taken off around the world. You see they're sponsored by it too. But, um, yep, let's kick off. They have one of our players on loan playing centre midfield, I believe. But um, we're going to skip straight to here where Oots got it and Pazienza almost gets to it first. Uh, the goalkeeper panics a little bit, poofs it off the pitch and their left back can't quite get to that in time. Again, we're blocking a shot with Kabak. Adams has it, he's cutting aside, tries to get it to a diving header, but thankfully Renault is there. We distribute it quickly to Mendil, gets out to Ramon, 1-2 with Drexler, and back to Mendil. Uth is playing attacking mid in this one rather than up front because we don't have enough cover in midfield really. Uh, Serdar has it, gives it to Pacienza, 1-2, and he's in behind. He only has 60 odd pace, but it's enough to get the goal. So 1-0 after 20 minutes. Another good start to a game in the league. If only we could take this form over into the cup competitions, which of course we're now out of. But uh, no, uh, Hoffenheim have a corner here. Try and trick their way around. There is our player, I believe, Rudy. Who I think's playing right back for them. But this is where you want Nakando. He's obviously so fast. And using his pace here. Raman in behind. Patient. No, Oot, sorry. And you've really got to score that. There's no excuse for missing that. There's a good counter to go from that corner. Matondo here, cutting inside, trying to skill his way around, trying to work a bit of space for a shot, uh, but blocked, unfortunately. And I think that's the last action from uh, Schalke of the half. Yep, there it is, the half-time whistle. So, a good first half for us there. I think, other than that diving header that they nearly scored, they didn't really have too much of a, too much of a shout of getting a goal. So, we just need to keep it calm and try and cut the win here, get a bit closer to European football. But skipping to the 55 minutes, you can see Hoffenheim had another shot off the edge of the box. Good catch there from Renault. Balled out Sane. Good ball playing centre back for us now. Uh, we've subbed off uh, Oots for Tatengwe and Raman was through that. I think he would have scored, but it's such a marginal offside call. I'm not sure. Oof, it's very close, you know. But uh, ultimately the right decision. They've brought on Bebu now from the bench, and Sane is absolutely out of position, and he's been skilled by Bebu. Rudy crosses it in, and Belfoldil can't score, but Adiman can. And it's the 82nd minute. Sub off cars though, because I think it was probably his fault that he was out of stamina, so he couldn't get back. That's why Sane was out there. But um, yeah, another late goal conceded. At least they didn't do the next gen celebration that takes about five minutes to watch. But the 92nd minute, we cross the ball in and our player goes down and the ref blows a free kick for Hoffenheim, which I think is a bit harsh. I think it should have just been a goal kick, not really a foul, but yeah, oh well, a 1-1 in Hoffenheim today. So a lot of that, def well, a lot of that draw was because of our squad fitness. So I'm going to go into my youth academy and see if we have anyone we can sub in. So we've got Mika Gash, who's got a bit of a maybe Finnish name, Mika. I only, of course, know Mika Hakkinen, the old Formula 1 driver. And I know there is quite a lot of uh, population sharing between 
uh, Finland and Germany. So I'm going to assume he's like a Nico Rosberg, kind of half Finn, half German, and he's chosen to play for Germany. But he's going to be our centre-back, centre-defensive mid, and CM. I think he's a physically strong, but yeah. Now we're going to fill his slot in our youth academy. Uh, we've signed this guy called Leo Moller. Um, he's a six foot six centre midfielder, which is absolutely insane. Four star weak foot, three star skills too, so he's pretty good on the ball. But he's going to be an absolute beast when we uh, get him into the team. Of course, I also noticed our goalkeeper in situation was a bit poor in the youth academy. So I, s I couldn't really choose between Schultz and Vogt. Um, but ultimately, Schulze was 15 and had a high value, so I went for Schulze instead of Vogt. Um, so yeah, our youth academy situation is looking pretty good here. Schulze, Rivas, Friedrich, you know, all high potential. And uh, we're going to make Felix Busch, who's our new signing. Well, not new signing, he's our forward signing uh, in the future, hopefully. Make him train to be a winger a bit more than the left mid that he already is. You might have noticed there that the profit there was pretty big. So we do have some good budget that we can use in January, which will probably be in the episode after this one. If I don't live stream it. But just making sure Mika Bush looks good for his debut because I am planning on bringing him, in, bringing him in off the bench in this next match against Leipzig. Um, so, yep, yeah, just putting him on the bench there instead of the Ibisevich guy, so yeah, we've already got a uh, Rahman on the bench, we don't need a slow striker as well as a fast striker, so that's all sorted now, hopefully Mika Bush can, uh, sorry I keep saying Mika Bush, Mika Gash, sorry, um, which of course if you know English slang is uh, not a very nice name to be called if you were in England, but um, nevertheless he's in Germany, hopefully he, does, he isn't Gash, Mika Gash, so here we go, time to choose our team for the Leipzig match. And we're going to go back to this formation because I've noticed they play 3-4-3. Three, uh, three, three. I think we do need the three defenders in the middle to try and man-mark their players. So we're going to have Uth and Patientia up front, uh, Draxler, Serdar, and Stambouli in midfield now. Making sure Gash is on the bench for this formation too. And we need to get Alder Karstorp playing right back too because obviously Ludwig isn't great. We stopped out Stambouli for shop because he's a bit more of an attacking player and I think Serdar has enough defensive ability for the whole midfield. And of course Drexler is no slouch in defence either. But yep, there's our team. We're playing 5-3-2 in this one. And fingers crossed that is a good decision when we're playing against this formation. It's a home game, of course. Last one was away. And uh, here we go at the Vetlins Arena. Veltlins Arena, sorry. Match day 15. So, of course, Leipzig, one of the most hated teams in Germany, but uh, also unbeaten still on this save after 14 games. So, it's up to us to spoil their season and prevent the uh, untouchable Red Bulls from uh, finishing in the top three, hopefully. Hopefully we can take their place. But Uth gets on the ball early here, some good footwork. Pazienza, he's slow, but he gets around Martel and it's just a good finish now. It's a uh, good power. He didn't need to finesse it. He just put his lace through it, straight in the bottom corner. Early goal. Cars up there celebrating his love in life in Gelsenkirchen. So, 1 0 early on is a good start, of course. But in the 10th minute, some good play from Leipzig. <clears throat> and yeah, instant reply. It's the guy that scored against you every single match in the first month of Ultimate Team, Hang Li Chang. Uh, but um, yeah, just as good with the AI. Draxler here gets past Orban. Tries to go around the goalkeeper, but the goalkeeper dives. I was hoping for a penalty when I tried that trick. But um, yeah, unfortunately nothing. Chang gets it again. But Soloth can volley in the second ball. That's poor from our defence with three centre backs. You'd hope we could win the initial header and then the second ball, but no. Solop, the old Crystal Palace flop, has just laced them back ahead. Uth with a bad pass there from the kickoff and a bit of shallow and soccer from Adams. But Paciencia is through again. He's on fire in this episode. It's just a little bit too slow there, and Glasky can just pick up the ball yet again. So that's first half, 2-1 down, bad start. 
We're going to have to try and do an AI level comeback in the second half, which hopefully we can. Um, but uh, it's going to be tricky against a team like Leipzig with their three defenders who are all so good on the, in the air and uh, tackling. Chang again narrowly misses. He's a really hard player to play against in this one. I find him a lot harder than people like Sancho um, who played against Dortmund. But uh, Paulson again is another tricky customer and he's made it 3 1 after 60 minutes. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's not looking too good for us in this one. 3 1 down, and we haven't really had too many chances outside of the, uh, the goal we scored. 65th minute now, and Paulson's on the ball again. There's another goal. 4 1. This is a. Uh, this is a danger of becoming a Bayern Munich level score. Poulsen bows to the crowd, his second goal, and Leipzig's fourth. Ten minutes later, and they've brought on some more subs, but we get the ball here. Schopf out to Pazienza, turns back to Schopf, crosses it in, tracks and misses the volley, but he gets the second ball this time. It's 4-2, and there are signs that we could get a comeback. So, we need to make some subs, of course. Um, Schopf is looking a bit tired, and as I mentioned before, we want to try out Gash. So, he's coming on. Matondo up front, he's up there with Raman, so we've got a lot of pace in there now. But, you can see it's working here. Raman up to Kozdup, who obviously is a bit tired. If we didn't have Matondo, I probably would have tried crossing it, but I did a low pass to Raman. It's blocked. If it was 3-4 there, I think we would have had a good chance. Red Bull taking the myth a little bit there by trying to flick it up for a volley shot in the last minute. But um, yeah, that's the end of the match. A 4-2 loss and I don't think it was particularly deserved. But that's also going to be the end of the episode for today. It's a shorter one because I've only got the two, uh, two matches in this one. But as I mentioned before, we've got two more matches and then the transfer window, which I'm planning on streaming this Sunday. I'll uh, host up a live stream so you can... Uh, you can make sure you're alerted when it happens so feel free to start following that or give that a like if you want before it starts but um yeah that's all for today's episode i hope you enjoyed it even though it was a bad performance as far as with just one point from two games and i will see you in the next one cheers and bye